So today I'm going to make a casual but hopefully very informative video about how to use TechX Studio. So when you come to the upstairs at Kaleidoscope, you are going to want to go through our East Hall door, which should be open because it's open any hour and it's okay to use the studio. The studio is on the right here. It is named Pancake Studios after the password that was on the computer when I acquired it from a young lady named Christy O'Donnell who used to work here. She basically sold me her entire studio before she moved down to California and I thought the password was funny, so that became Pancake Studios. You can see on the list some of the great software that we have here. And you can reserve this room using this link here. There's a QR code, but you can also go to this website is quadrockschool.youcanbook.me. It's kind of a weird URL, but that's what it is. And when you book it, I will see that, and I will get back to you with a code to the door and an approval that you can use the studio. Um, it's available most readily on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but there's some other times as well. You are sharing a wall with this studio, so there can sometimes be some uh, noise concerns in working with whoever's in that room, making sure you guys don't bug each other. Um, I'm gonna enter the code on the door, which I would email to you. When you come into the studio, especially if it's nighttime or winter or whatever, there are no lights switched by the door, so what you actually have to do is go back behind here, turn the light on manually, so now the light's on, and the only ventilation in this room is actually this fan. You can turn the fan on, but you have to manually turn it off because the timer does not shut off automatically. And then some air will come through this room, this little vent or that vent, but it can be kind of stuffy in here, but that's kind of the point of the studio is to have an enclosed space. So then there's a list on the wall here of what to do next. Turn on power switch on rack below the desk. So this is what you do first. Down there, there's a Furman power conditioner that you turn on and that turns on all of this gear underneath. And then you turn on the computer. The switch on an iMac is back on the back side, lower left. Kind of, you can kind of feel like a little depression where it is, or if you have to go actually look at it, you look at it. There's a picture of our rock band, Rock D, AKA Complicated Odds, at one of their last shows. And then you can open the software. So this computer has lots of stuff. Um, the easiest thing to use is probably GarageBand, as you can see down here, the icon down there in the center. We also have Logic, which is kind of garage fan on steroids. If you want to use Pro Tools, you have to get the iLock USB key from me in the band room in order to use it. Um, but most people just use one of those two programs. There are some other things like Ableton, uh, Isotope, Reason, that kind of stuff. Um, right now the computer's unlocked, but if for some reason it, it is locked, you want to use the Kaleidoscope account and the password is Lucky Charms. It says on the wall here all lowercase one word so you've got headphones so with the headphones you can use this anytime the studio anytime so the headphones have their own volume knob down here and they're plugged in right there they should be sitting around on the desk or something but if they're not there is another pair on the floor to the left um, this other volume knob here controls the output to the speakers. You don't necessarily have to turn the speakers on, but I'm going to turn them on, and they have a control that's in the back for each one. Kind of a little paddle switch. You kind of have to reach for it. I always have trouble finding at least one out of two, even though they're in the same place. And then this mixer is kind of important because we have these speakers here that are called mix cubes, and they're kind of funny, but they're actually to simulate kind of poor quality speakers or bad earbuds or something. So normally I turn them off on the mixer and I use the red knob here to turn the JBLs, the big speakers, up. Whoop, there it is. And then this is like a master for both. Most of the time I ignore all these other things that are on there and it should be wired so it all works. But let's, uh, let's open up something and see. So I'm clicking on the garage band icon down here. Uh, I'm not going to go into how to use an iMac in this. Assume that you know how to use an iOS or Mac based system. That's kind of like another tutorial. Um, but right now I'm loading a song that was done by a student named Izzy. It's 
kind of like whatever was last worked on is in there. So now I can see the project here. This is GarageBand. It's filling the whole screen. If you want to go back to the Apple menu, you can hit the very upper left there, but I'm going to use the GarageBand menu. I'm not going to play a bunch of this because I don't know if Izzy wants us to listen to it, but just give you an idea the speakers are working. So this is coming simultaneously through the headphones that are sitting on the desk, but also through the speakers here. Um, you have a master volume knob on GarageBand up here in the slider, so I'm going to turn it up a little bit. But I also can turn up the speakers manually down here. So now they're quite loud using this volume knob. So um, it may come up on somebody else's project, but if you're like, I don't want to obviously work on their project, then please don't mess with someone else's project. Um, we'll just open up new. So it gives me new GarageBand file. I'll say, let's not save Izzy's thing because if we changed it, we don't want to change it. And we're going to like just pull up an empty project here in GarageBand. So it's going to say, do you want to have a software instrument or an audio? Well, I'm going to pull the audio one. So I'm going to push create. Now there normally are two microphones in here. One of them is not in here right now, but there's multiple lines on this interface down here. So the first one on the left says vocal. So whatever's plugged into this is going to microphone input one. And normally we have another one for microphone input two that says amp, but that's really just an instrument mic. It's like a, it's like a pencil shaped mic. Um, both of them are normally in here, but actually because of the current pandemic, they're both in my room for Zoom calls. But you can plug also other microphones in anywhere you want. And then GarageBand, every track, like right now I'm on track one. And I can see down here which input it's pulling off of. So that device is called the PreSonus. Fire Studio, that's that piece of hardware we were just looking at. So if that's not coming up here, we have a sound card problem. That thing's basically an external sound card, so if you're not seeing it there, you've got to get it to be seen there. And uh, I think up here, on the back stuff, under sound, you may be able to look at like whether that device is there. If it says internal speakers, do not use that, because it will not make for a good project. So I want to make sure that PreSonus Fire Studio comes up. If it doesn't come up, you may have to restart the computer or go through the, the uh, starting steps for the room in order again. If I want to change it to the other mic, I can just pick any of those inputs. So right here I've got like, there's mic one, but I can go to input two. And we don't usually use all the other ones, but we can. Another important note is we do have um, cables that run to the adjoining room, as you can see in there that go through the wall. So if you want to plug in all those cables, they're down here laying on the ground, and you can record up to eight things from the adjoining room using this snake that goes through that beautiful little hole in the wall right there. And those would all have to be plugged in here to corresponding inputs on the external sound card, the PreSonus. So if I push record, I'm now recording whatever is coming onto that track from the selected input which of course right now is probably nothing because um, <laughs> there's no microphones attached. But it's giving me a metronome, which I might want to turn off if I don't want to record to a click. So I just turned off the metronome there. GarageBand is pretty simple. So if something's not working, you're making some wrong assumption because it's pretty, what you see is what you get. Um, it, that has advantages and disadvantages, but it's a great way to start learning how to use things. If you add, using this little add button here, a new track and you want to pick, pick software instrument, this is where it gets a little bit more fun. So I'm going to say create. Now I have a software layer which is using what are called soft syncs. The over here are all these sounds that you can use in GarageBand. So you have all of these instruments that you can create things with on a software instrument track. But here is what you have to do to actually create those. Um, over here we have a piano, but it's actually a MIDI controller, and I'm not responsible for the sign. Don't know where it came from. Um, well, we know where it came from, which was Gilman Boulevard, but I don't know how it got here. So anyway, um, this is our 88 key keyboard. It's already hooked into GarageBand. So whatever sound is selected over here 
I can play and record on this keyboard. So let's say I want to pick, uh, I don't know, some world music thing. Chinese drum set. Okay, so now I've got a Chinese drum set here. Groovy little icon. So if I want to record on this, we're going to see what happens. I have no idea what it sounds like. Wow, that was amazing. That shows up as MIDI information on the track here, track two. And if I stop and play it back, I will hear that amazing percussion solo that I just played. What's really crazy about those type of things though is you can actually change the sound after you've recorded it. So because it's MIDI information, not actual sound, notice it uses the green color for that, you can um, play it back using some other sound. So it can be changed after you play. It's very much like the roll on an old West uh, player piano. So I can just keep adding tracks here until um, I'm done with my project or I kill the computer's uh, memory. So when I'm done, if I want to save it, I can save as up here and save the project. As of right now, we still have space on this computer for everyone to save their projects, but there might get to a point where that's not possible. And it's always a good idea to back up your stuff. So we have an SD card reader. You can back up things to SD card, or you can bring a USB stick or an external hard drive. There's also an external hard drive in this in this set setup. It's called the Mac Passport. So if you want to save it two places here, just in case my computer dies, you can save it to the desktop under a folder with your name, or you can save it to the Passport, which shows up in the um, save options. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to mention. There is usually a ukulele in this room you can use. Um, there is a guitar amp you can plug into and mic up using a pencil mic. Uh, most of the stuff over here is just storage or random things that I haven't integrated yet. Um, when you leave, it'd be really great if you saved your project. Um, if you want to export it to share it with someone, there's a share uh, icon here on GarageBand where you can like save it to an iTunes folder or email it to someone or yourself. Um, but then you should go through this process of turning everything off. So you turn off the gear in this order. So first you turn off the speakers. So I'm going to turn those guys off because that protects them from pops and clicks. Okay, they're off. And then it says close the software. So I don't need to save my amazing uh, Chinese creation here. So I'm going to say don't save. And it's trying to get me to open up a new project. So I am going to go up here to under GarageBand and just say quit GarageBand. It's great if you totally close out of programs because it saves on memory for the next person who uses it if all the programs are quit. Down here, I'm trying to quit. Uh, I just quit iTunes because someone left that open. And then you sleep the computers. So you go up here to the uh, Mac icon upper left and just say sleep. That should turn the screen off. And then when you're done with that, you turn the sound card rack firm and power conditioner off and then at that point we're almost done we can turn off the lights turn off the fan if you left it on because otherwise it will run for days and we're going to cover up the keyboard and then we're done thanks for watching this tutorial let me know if you have any questions